हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू न्यू वीडियो की हाल चाल आई होप यू गाइस आर डूइंग गुड इन दिस फ्रीक्वेंसी प्रॉब्लम मिनिमम नंबर ऑफ डेज टू मेक एम पॉकेट्स बुके नाउ व्हेन आई रेड दिस प्रॉब्लम फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम माय रिएक्शन वाज प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट एंड प्रॉब्लम एक्चुअली गुड कूल लेट्स रीड द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट इटसेल्फ फर्स्ट सो इट सिंपली सेज दैट यू आर गिवन एन एरे कॉल्ड एज ब्लूम डे एंड इंटीजर एम एंड इंटीजर के I will summarize for you. It says that you have this bloom day array in which it says that the first the flower will be bloomed at the day number one. The flower will be bloomed at the day number three. So imagine you have these number of flowers. In case five flowers, this flower will bloom at day one. This flower will bloom at day ten. Bloom at day three. Bloom at day ten. Bloom at day twelve. Sorry, day two. Now you are also given a number m. M says that you have to make three bouquet. Now, in every bouquet, you have to fill k number of flowers. But those k flowers should be k consecutive flowers. Now, that is the problem itself. Now, it's it says okay. Uh, the consist of n flowers where i flower will bloom at the bloom at like bloom day i and can be used exactly once. Which means one flower can be used in your bouquet just once. Ultimately, you have to return the minimum number of days you need to wait so as to make m bouquets from the garden because garden have n number of flowers. If it is impossible to make m bouquets, no matter even waiting infinite time, you have to return minus one. Let's see with examples if we just verify it what we have learned. So it says you have to make three bouquets. Each bouquet should have one flower and that to one consecutive flower. So and I want to make my bouquet as fast as possible. So there could have been one way as make one one. Okay, one bouquet from here, one bouquet from here, one bouquet from here. Because I need one one flowers. With that, the time need or the days needed would have been ten. Because you can see, this flower will be available on the tenth day. But I want minimum number of days. So okay, I will make the first bouquet with this flower. Second bouquet with this flower. Second bouquet with this flower. Okay, you are good. You are sorted. Now you will see. Okay, Aryan, it seems good. It seems easy. Okay, let's see. Let's see. You have M as three. You have to make now three bouquets. Each bouquet should have two flowers and that two two consecutive flowers. So in total, my requirement is three bouquets, two consecutive flowers. So for sure, in total, I would need six flowers. At least I would need six flowers. But in this case, I only have five flowers. There is no way possible I can even generate a bouquet, total three bouquets having six flowers in total. I cannot generate because I only have five flowers, so it's impossible. Now, okay, third example. You have you have to make two bouquets. Each bouquet should contain three flowers and that, and that two three consecutive flowers. So you went about and said. Aryan, uh, with the above approach, it felt to me that I can go in a greedy way. If I can go in a greedy way, I realized, okay, I have to make three bouquets. I will choose the one having the minimum number of time. I will choose the bouquet having the minimum number of time. I will choose one. Then I will try to search for two. Okay. Then I will try to search for three. Okay. I found it, and that's the answer. That's the reason my answer is three. Okay. In this case. I will try to do okay. I'll try to search for seven. Then I will try to search for twelve. Right? Then okay. In this case, if I will try to search for my number seven, as in when I say search, I mean okay. I will try that if I can make my bouquets in seven. In my seven days, I can make my bouquet or not. These required number of bouquets, which is two bouquets. So if I am planning to make that, I will say okay, seven. For sure, I can make. But for another bouquet, I need again three consecutive flowers. But three consecutive flowers. If I plant three, like next flower remaining is these three, or these three. Even if I take three consecutive flowers now, a twelve is coming in picture, which means I need the twelve days for this flower to bloom. So okay, I cannot make on seven days. On twelve days, for sure, these flowers will be available because they have already been bloomed on seven days. And on twelve days, like for sure, this flower will also be available. So I will be able to make two bouquets having three consecutive flowers. So, so far, 
with this example itself you realize one thing very basic thing that again i took a new example so as to make it much more bigger and much more elaborative you were trying what you were trying okay aryan i will try for the first day if i can make if i can make my two bouquets having two consecutive flowers on first day so you will have only these two flowers available then he will say okay it, it it was not possible okay let's try for the second date on the second date you would say okay this flower will be available and existingly the flower bloomed at the day one will also be available because they have already been bloomed on day one so these are also available right okay on day three just a flower blooming at day three will be available okay he's available rest all existing are also available on day four again the flower blooming at day four is available on day five you will say aryan there is no day five i can skip the day five okay yeah you can skip the day five ignore that day five but even if you have written the day five itself then for sure all the flowers bloomed up till day five will be available so i can see all the flowers flowers bloom up till day four will also be available now okay at day six i just have a new flower bloomed now you were saying what by by going greedy as in like by going on the first day second day third day fourth day you were trying that because you want minimum number of days with that in the first case you know that your bloom day of i is 1 e 9 because my 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 inference is that 6 is the maximum number 6 is the maximum number so for sure on the sixth day all the flowers in this array will be bloomed i am again i am ignoring the condition when the condition is minus one the answer is minus one when you cannot even bloom the flowers that's minus one which means when the total flowers you have is less than what is the required number of flowers in your total bouquet if that's the case i will straightforwardly re return a minus one if not then i will try to go on to all the days one two and again maybe you might say i will try to go on to all the days which are actually in the area itself okay in the worst case, I can have 1e5, 1e5 number of elements in the array. So, in worst case, you can say, okay, you will go to 1e5 number of elements. If I hold on, even if I go on to all the elements, just so as to find the answer, okay, at the fourth day, will I be able to make two bouquets with two consecutive flowers? That's a question. How to find that answer? Okay, now what I can say, okay, at this stage, at the day four, I can represent my array as saying, okay, three. 2 which means this flower bloomed at the day 3 this flower bloomed at the, at the day 2 here because it will be blooming at day 6 so it's a gap for me it's a gap for me to represent the gap i showed as a minus 1 this is a gap this is a big gap for me and why i have to say that because i wanted consecutive count i should somehow be able to represent or show my consecutive count that's the reason i have to block if something is not available either space either empty or something which is not possible in the array okay and rest all elements as it is now again so far the question was that you are at this specific day you have this array as shown you have to find if it is following your condition or not which means two bouquet having two consecutive counts which means each bouquet having two flowers and two consecutive flowers so what you will do you will want ultimately that you can make one bouquet with two consecutive flowers so this can make two consecutive flowers so this is one this is one bouquet this two are two consecutive flowers so this can again make one bouquet so now you have two bouquets this two again can make two consecutive flowers so it's again another third bouquet now if these three are the bouquets so what you will do you will iterate on the array if you are obtaining a non zero value which means a non minus one value in this case a non minus one value which means it's a flower at that specific day and it's available for me if something is available for me which means if the bloom day of i that thing is not equal to minus one and again minus one i will do purposely from my end if, if it's not equal to minus one then i will increase the consecutive count by one so in the very beginning my consecutive count will be zero i will i will get this my consecutive count will become a one then i will get this my consecutive count will become a two as soon as my consecutive count becomes a two i know one thing for sure if it becomes a two my two as in required consecutive count for one bouquet if that becomes equal to k as in two in this case i will make one bouquet okay one bouquet number of bouquet increased by one which means one bouquet is now made one bouquet is now made and again make sure to reset your consecutive count to zero because one bouquet is made so i will reset my consecutive count to zero consecutive count is now zero 
Now it will again land onto this location. Uh, it's a minus one. It's a minus one. So again, my constant count will again remain a zero itself. Okay. Here it is zero. Now it will land onto here. Non-zero. Okay. Constant constant count is one. Again, non-zero constant count is two. That's a case. I have again formed one more bouquet. So again, number of bouquet increased to two now. Okay. One more bouquet formed. But as it has increased, so I have to reset that value to zero. Okay, again, next element, constitute count to 1, next constitute count to 2, again, constitute, constitute count equal to 2, again, I have formed now 3 bouquets, number of bouquets formed now are 3. So, I realized on day 4, with this configuration, and you, and you know the, how this configuration is made, I can make 3 bouquets, but my requirement was making 2 bouquets. So, I am extra, but at least I was able to make 2 bouquets, so I am good. So, the day 4, if, if, I sh if I should say, fourth other day is possible and is feasible. And if the number of bouquets formed is more than or equal to the required bouquet, which is M, then I'm good to say that the, let, these number of days are okay. Okay, for sure, okay. Now, the, the crux is that if you would have gone about this approach, in worst case, for sure, you can have one e nine number of maximum days. Maximum days, but even if I, if you are you are in, I will take distinct days always. It can be only one e five. Still, one e five into n because to find the answer that if this specific configuration is a valid will generate valid number of or, or will generate more number of bouquets having consecutive flower count, you will take again o of n time because you are iterating on the entire array for it. Thus, it will take roughly O of n square. Although, with this case, if you go about and try for all the ones, you will take 1 e 9 into n. But I just took a benefit of doubt and say, okay, let's say you go to all the distinct days, then it will be 1 e 5 into n. Still, it will give you TLE. How to go about it? Simple pattern which we saw that our values are always, basically, our empty places are always being filled, which means number of bouquets formed will always be increasing here the number of bouquets formed are two next time the number of bouquets formed are again two because either this or this right because i want two consecutive counts number of bouquets formed next time was one and two two number of bouquets formed next time was one two and three number of bouquets formed next time was one two three next time was one two sorry one two Three, three, and yeah, three. So you realize that number of bouquets will always be increasing. And you wanted what? You wanted just number of bouquets should be greater than equal to M. So something is increasing, linearly increasing, and you are doing a linear search on every of the day. What you will do? Optimize it. Things are linearly increasing. You are doing a linear search. Do a what? Do a binary search. If you don't know what a binary search is and how the template we use so as to not dry run binary search code every time. Go and watch this generalized code of binary search. Cool. Coming on back, we know that we now can simply go and do a binary search on our days. I will say on the fourth, again, how a binary search works, you have a range L to R. I showed you. L range, L will be your first day, which means day one, which is the minimum day possible. As you can see, minimum day possible is day one. Maximum day possible is 1 e 9. But you can take the maximum element of the array itself. You can take a maximum, your R as 6 also. For specific array. L will be 1, R will be 6. Then, what do you do? You find the mid of, you find the mid in your binary search code. And now you will say Aryan, but are you building this entire array again and again? That you will not do. Like as in, okay, you showed us array, you will iterate on the array for sure. Which means that this piece of code, which you were earlier doing a linear search, that will transform to a log of maximum element. But still, I will have to do on the entire array just to figure out the number of bouquets formed or can be formed. But for that, earlier what I was doing, earlier I was make, I, I already had this array, but now at this point when I am at a mid, I have to build this array. How I will build the array? Very simple. You build this array by saying day number is three. I want, okay, this, this represents a flower bloomed at day 3 or lesser than day 3. So, if this value of bloom day of i is less than, if this value of bloom day of i, if it is less than or equal to my current day, again, this day is mid itself for you because you are doing a binary search and a binary search, this is the mid location. 
this is less than equal to your mid then it's a valid location so i can replace this condition by saying if the bloom day of i if it is less than equals to my mid then i should increase my consecutive count if it is more then i should make it the consecutive, consecutive count i should make it to zero and that is the only thing which you have to do cool let's see the code it's exactly same firstly i put that if condition that if my m into k if it is more than n then return a minus one again why it is long because you can simply see your m and k k again your k can be n n is 1 e 5 so you can say 1 e 5 1 e 5 into 1 e 6 can go out of integer limit that's the reason i took a long here just so that it handles that integer overflow case now i took my l as 1 r as the in maximum element of the entire array and my answer will give me the answer as the minimum number of days I do a standard template binary search in which I will do L is less than equal. Again, if you're confused on binary search, dry code, like dry run of binary search itself, go and watch that one video. That will solve everything. Then uh, I'll go on to mid. I will first check if this mid number of days is okay for me to make M bouquets having K consecutive count of flowers. Then I will call this is okay function. If it is okay, I should try for lesser number of days, which means I should reduce my R. If it is not okay, then I should try for more number of days, which means I should increase my L. And ultimately, I will get my answer. Now, coming on to this function, this is simply saying that for this mid number of days, I have this bloom day array. I have to make M bouquets and each bouquet should have K consecutive flower count. So, I will take consecutive count and I will take number of bouquets which I can form. And ultimately, you can see number of bouquets should be more than equal to my required number of bouquets, which is M. Now I will go on to all of my bloom day array in that I will check if that bloom day of I it is less than equal to the day I am trying to do a binary search on then increase the consecutive count else make the consecutive count to zero because I want consecutive count consecutive count so consecutive count should be zero because it is now no more consecutive now if the consecutive count becomes equal to k I have formed one good bouquet increase the bouquet count by one and make sure because you have got one bouquet so reduce the consecutive count back to zero and then start the iteration again reduce it to zero and start the iteration again which means again it will go to the for loop ultimately if your number of bouquets which you can form is more than equal to m you are good to go and ultimately you got entire thing into m sorry n number of array in number of elements in the array of bloom day into log of maximum element cool i hope you got it if you have then do smash like baby we want to reach 45k before june I don't think it's possible you're not cooperating but yeah i think you can get this done bye bye take care you join discord bye bye cheers